I got asked this today. How do you create a Google group? I'm going to show you the basic steps for creating a Google group in this video. So first of all, you got to be logged into your Gmail account or your Google Workspace account. And if you are using a Google Workspace account, your admin has to allow you to create Google Groups. If you are go to do the process that I'm sharing with you and you can't do it and you're using Google Groups, you got to go to your admin and ask them to change the permissions so you can create a group. So it starts right here. I almost always start everything from Gmail. You go over to the nine dots and you should be able to find groups either in the first or the second box. And I don't see it there. So I'm going to have to do it the other way. And the other way to get to Google Groups is, again, I recommend in Chrome, signed into Chrome, logged into Gmail, hit the plus, and just type in Groups. And there's Google Groups, groups.google.com. Now, I've got a bunch of groups already created, but I'm going to walk you through the basic processes of creating a new group. So I'm going to hit the Create a Group icon right there, boom. I'm going to give it a name, and the name I want to give it here is Dust Bunny Collectors. I can type this in normal good format. Let me go back and put a space before Bunny. Dust Bunny Collectors. Now, Google is going to you know, give it a group name. I could jam all that together, Dust Bunny Collectors, I want. And you get 300 characters for a description. Let me put a description in here. Give me one second. That's 188, and that's a good start. I'm going to hit Next. Now this next piece is important because this decides how your members can engage the group. So let's talk about it. Who can search for the group? Well, let's let it be wide open. Anyone can find the group. That's how you get more people to join your group. So you can either let it be completely secretive or let anyone on the web discover it. Who can join the group? How about only invited uh, members? Anyone can ask or anyone can join. Now, anyone can join is 100% open to anybody on the internet. Anyone can ask is 100% open to anyone on the internet who finds it, but they have to have permission to join the group. So that, that'll vet, let you vet the members and you can either accept or decline their request to join. Only invited users, that means that no one's gonna find the button or the link to join the group. They have to be sent an invite. I'm going to go with anyone can ask. Make, again, it makes it a little bit more accessible. Now, these next three are also critical. Who can view conversations? Well, ideally, if you're having a group, one reason for having a group is for people to have conversations with each other. So who can view the conversations? Any member. Not anyone publicly. And it's not just the group managers or just the group owner. But this would be anybody who's in the group. I like that idea. I don't need to have it. I can click for anyone on the web. I can click for only managers. I can click for only the owner. I'm going to click for group members. Here's the next big one. Who can post? If the group owner only wants to distribute content, then you would select group owner. If you've got some managers who also want to participate in sharing content, you'll do group managers. However, if you want the members to be able to start and participate in conversations, you'll choose group members. I would not, uh, in this context, see a reason to let anyone post to your group. So I'm going to leave it for group members. Now, here's the third big piece of sub privacy. Who can view members? So maybe I can keep the member list completely secret to only me, or I can let group managers see the entire membership. But again, if I want this to be an engaging group, I'm going to let the group members see who the members are. This right here is what's called it, the level of engagement, full, full level of engagement for members. Members can view conversations, members can start conversations, members can, members can see the membership list. And then I hit next. 
Now here's where I send invites out to start inviting people to join the group. So let's send an invite to, um, I'm on in his Burris Consulting at Gmail. I'm gonna invite Teddy Burris at Gmail. I'm gonna join right, MC Wise Man at Burris Consulting. I'm gonna invite Teddy Burris at Burris Consulting. And here's the, me here's the message. You get a thousand characters to write of this message. So you could write this message outside of here, edit it, proof it, spell check it, et cetera, et cetera, and then paste it in here. Let me write a quick little message. Now I clicked on this directly add member. So I'm gonna directly add these three people, but then I'm also, this is Gmail, this person. Then I'm, they're gonna get this note and then I'm gonna change the subscription level so they can, I could say they get no email, which means they have to go to the group page to see all the conversations. I could abridge it, which basically what that means is gonna send out bundles of up to 150 conversations that are going on at one time, usually once a day. I could do a digest and the digest is basically going to be just a summary that they can click on and go see the details in bundles of 25. Or I can send an email every time there's a new post. You know what? Maybe because I'm hoping this would be really engaging, I'll go back to digest. Directly add the members and I'm going to create the group. Say I'm not a robot. Create the group. Dust Bunny Collectors at Google Groups, that's the email address, has been created now. All about Dust Bunny Collectors. I have now four members. I have myself, then I have Teddy Burris at Gmail, I have NC Wiseman at Burris Consulting, and TL Burris at Burris Consulting. Go to the group. And here's the group. It's that easy to create a group. Now I'm gonna give you a couple more things that you need to understand. I'm not gonna go into full management, but a couple more things you need to understand. So if I look at the group settings, what you'll see is there's the email address. So I've got it set up so that anybody can send an email, any member can send an email to dustbunnycollectors at googlegroups.com. So you gotta really ought to write that email address down so you have it, dustbunnycollectors at googlegroups.com. The other thing you wanna pay attention to is Here's the settings we did earlier. Who can see the group? Anybody. Who can join it? Anybody can ask. And there's the three primary settings for see the conversations, create a conversation, and see the memberships. Group content classification. Who is group content suitable for? If you uh, choose adults only, you can't change this later. This is everyone. I'm not gonna do adults only. Here's the member privacy. Identification requires for new members, either display name or Google profile. Who can contact group owners? Well, that's interesting. I do have anyone on the web can send a message to group owners. Who can view membership uh, and member email addresses? Only group members, excuse me, only group managers. I could let group members see their email addresses, but I want to keep that these conversations in here, so I don't want to distribute out people's private email addresses. Allow posting, allow email posting, allow web posting, conversation history, because I turned on uh, other group features, this has to be on. Some other settings is who can reply privately to authors. I, I, group members can reply privately to author as well as through the uh, group conversations. Who can attach files? Anybody can. Who can moderate content? That's a group manager's job. Who can moderate uh, metadata? Who can, who can post as a group? So the group managers can post as a group. Members post as themselves. The default address that used uh, in the byline for the messages to the group is either the author's address or the group's address. I wanna make that group because I wanna keep all these conversations in the group. <clears throat> message moderation, choose where to moderate messages. Moderate messages from non-members, moderate all messages. Well, I'm not gonna get any messages from non-members because uh, non-members can only engage with the owners. So I'll leave that for uh, um, no moderation. If it gets to be a problem, I may need to come in and turn on moderation. Uh, new member restrictions, no posting restrictions for new members. 
New member posts are moderated. Let's leave it as moderated to give them a chance to prove themselves. Spam message handling. Uh, reject all message marked as spam. Moderate and notify content moderators. Moderate without notifying content moderators. You know, if it's going to come in as spam, I want it to be spam. I really want to keep this clean. Reject message notifications. Notify senders when posts are rejected. I'm going to turn that on and include a default message. The default message is this content is not uh, relevant or suitable to this Google group. So if I, if I reject something someone sends, they're going to get that message. Here's another one, suffix, prefix, automatically add text to the beginning of the email subject to identify group. So I could put, you know, dust bunny collectors, um, and I could put, you know, content, put brackets around that. Maybe put a space after it. Uh, email footer. Include the standard groups footer. Now that's important. The standard groups footer has the unsubscribe button and the ability for you to go view the messages online. You absolutely need to have that. If you don't also have included custom footer, which will also include this footer right here, but I don't need a custom footer. Um, gr group email language, English, post reply to, send replies to group post to. Sender, choose the recipients. Or I can have it always go to all group members. I want to use the sender, choose the recipient. Conversation mode means it does threading. And uh, member uh, moderation, who can moderate managers. I think I've already seen this already. It's a, somewhat a repeat. Group managers can moderate. Who can modify, modify roles? Group manager can modify roles, not group members. Maybe it could be the group owner modifies roles. Um, I could uh, create a custom role if I want to, give it a name. This would be somebody who does something a little different. Maybe it's like the uh, Sergeant of Arms who, who says, that, welcome to new members. Uh, maybe it's a member uh, a initiative uh, person who has the first conversation with new members. There could be other reasons for having a custom role. And then, bottom line, delete the groups. And if I'm all done with my editing, hit save changes. And now, this group is ready to use. I could start a new conversation, uh, which is sending an email to Dust Bunny Collectors. And hit post. Now, if I go back to the very top, you'll see that under conversations, a new conversation, there it is right there, Dust Bunny Collectors. This is actually from the, uh, from the group, it's not from Teddy. And, um, and now I can start a conversation here. I can reply back to the individual who posted it, which in this case, it is a Dust Bunny Collector, um, and start my conversation. Again, remember, under group settings, there's the email address. Dust Bunny Collectors at googlegroups.com. And I can go to members and I can always add new members from here or if the group gets discovered through a uh, Google Groups search that someone does, then they could request to join from there. The best way to get really good at managing a Google group is to build a group, experiment with it, and experiment with every option you have here so you understand it better and you can use it better. I'm Teddy, your Google Workspace and Gmail strategist, trainer, and coach.